Okay, so All right. today we're going to share an experience with my uh, hermana, mi hermana Julie Meichler, who has been absent from the Dermot Radio Show for a couple of months, but we're excited to have it back. We just shared an adventure. We went to a Hindu temple, and we are going to share our experience with Abhinav Dwaveri, who is, you're still the vice president of the school, right? Yes, of I Of the am. university. Yes. Okay, I, I just want to make I sure. Am. Yes. Perfect. And Brian, I don't hear any music. If it's playing in the background, I don't hear it. Are we on? I'll be right here. Okay, here we go. Time right to dance. Here. Good. I'm wondering if it's my mic that's bad. Maybe Abhinav is coming out really strong. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web. I hope you can hear. Com. Now, let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, the purpose of the show is to provide a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to learn a new truth, embrace this new truth truth and live the life of your dreams. There's so many misconceptions and perceptions, you know, I know everything and you don't know anything or my truth, I need to hang on to my truth. But today we're going to dive into a truth that that belongs to the Hindu faith. And so we are um, embracing and this is a segment that um, my my best friend Julie Michaeler and I have <clears throat> we we started with it was the the vision of our um, our time together on the air, which is to embrace other religions, to break down the walls of religion. And she has joined me through this journey since we started. She's taken a couple of months break, but we're back with embracing Hinduism. So Hinduism 101 is what we're going to dip our toe in Hinduism. And I wonder if you have ever stepped into a temple. The only thing that's keeping us from other religions and learning about other denominations is a wall, walking through a door. And so today, we're going to walk through the door and see what are the myths, what are the beliefs, what are the values, especially, especially talking about reincarnation. This is a topic that we've never talked about. And who else then my co-host to be with us, Julie Meichler. And I'm going to bring Julie now, but later we're going to talk with Abhinav Dwibedi. He's the vice president of Hindu University of America. We're going straight to the top, baby. And since <laughs> I, I've got Julie here waiting for me, waiting uh, on the side here, Julie, how was your experience? And thank you for coming back to the Olympic Dormit Radio Show. Oh, it's always so wonderful to be here with you. And we were at this Hindu temple last Friday, and it was an absolutely delightful and enlightening uh, morning and tour by Abhinav. And, you know, it, I think the, the most beautiful thing to me is to hear about a religion from a man who loves it so deeply. Yes. The, the care and the passion and the interest um, was really dynamic and very, very, very inspiring. And, and the I learned love. so much in an hour and a half. It was yes, amazing. I know. We could have stayed there all day. We and, could have. And, and, you know, we went to, we have done the show before, but Julie, you had missed out on it because you had gone to uh, visit your mom. Right. And so this show is dedicated to your mom as we embrace you know, we talk about reincarnation. We don't know about reincarnation. And I just want to dedicate, I feel like she's with us today. Oh, as we, you, as, as we do, you know, as we embrace what we don't know, we don't know. And so, you know, you were talking about the, the fact that um, you were able to walk in and feel the, the love that Abhinav presented to us with all the different beliefs and values and traditions. And I, it brought me to... Um, the time that we went, I went before Nora and I did the show of Hinduism, 
the priest, I didn't know if I had shared this with you before, but I shared it to you when we were in our, um, when we were together at the Hindu temple in Castleberry, um, that the priest had given me a flower. And I had that flower um, when I I think I talked about the flower. And for those of you who would like to listen to that show, you can go to whenyouneedafriend.com. And it was as well as Hinduism, embracing Hinduism. But um, that flower lasted for over a month. And it looked as beautiful as when he gave it to me. There's got to be something symbolic about it. We're going to have to ask Abhinav when we ask That's him to come. That's right. Yes. So you've said many times of all of the shows we've done on breaking down the walls of religion, you always refer back to Hinduism. What is it that has captured your imagination with Hinduism, Lil? You know, I guess I've had this thing. There, there's, there's something positive about every dom- denomination, and there's other things Absolutely. that you just can't. Uh, and, and I guess it was... The fact that it's about being and about experiencing, and it's the most organized, unorganized religion I've ever <laughs> walked into. I don't know if that makes sense right now, but maybe Abhinav can explain that. But there is nothing, there is just, you, there's no time for service. There's no, you can go in when you want. You can sit there and do whatever you want. You can sing, you can, you can dance, you can, you, you, you can experience however you want. And that's what I thought it went as a Catholic and I've grown up Catholic and I've shared this before. I had this thing about um, having to pray to a, you know, a certain way, a certain prayer, a certain thing. But with Hinduism, you have nothing stopping you. Mm, freedom was the word that came to mind. Freedom! That's it. That's it. And this is what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to continue our conversation. We bring Abhinav Duvedi to the fold when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Abhinav, we love you. Okay, good. Can you hear me now a little better? Yeah, we can hear you a little better. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, right. so now that we've talked about our experience, and thank you, Julie, for asking me that question, because, you know, um, the the one thing I will say is I want to nail it about polytheistic and monotheistic and um, some of the myths. Um, Abhinav, when, I, when we introduce you, I'd love for you to share a little bit about yourself, and then we'll start asking you some questions. We'll be hitting you between Julie and I. We'll be going back and forth. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) And I know all my viewers are going to fall in love with Abhinav. And um, so Abhinav, if people want to reach out and learn more about Hinduism, how does the university, the Hindu University of America, um, kind of enter? brings the the public together how do how can you bring this information out online university it's an online university yes it is open to everybody and we have faculty and students from all over the world teaching and we offer a formal as well as informal education formal means towards a degree informal just to get to know something you want to learn about something the other thing is we hold seminars conferences talks and so on by invited speakers and knowledgeable people. And generally it is open to all and most of the time it is free also. Very nice. That's what uh, we do at Hindu University. Nice. It's located in Orlando, Florida, but it's online so it's available from anywhere. And the Hindu um, email is um, www.hua.edu. That's um, right. and so, um, yeah, and you have a great team. You have a great team of uh, professors. And uh, how long has the university been around? The university has been around since 1989. So it's been almost uh, 27, 28 years now. Wow. Right in Orlando. Very nice. Nice. Okay, so I am going to... Okay, here we go. Come on, Abby, now if we need to dance. Thank you and namaste to everybody. All you can text us. Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail. Uh, yes, yes, yes. What was that, Julie? What did you say? 5959. Oh, namaste. Namaste. We want to talk namaste, about that. Everybody. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show where we're embracing another 
faith, learning about it, because um, and there are a lot of Hindus out there. And for Hinduism, and you can be any religion you want to be and still embrace Hinduism. Because to me, it's a spiritual side. This is what I got out of it, that it's the spiritual side of who I am and where I want to be. And so um, I just want to introduce uh, Avinav Dwivedi. I had mentioned that he is the uh, vice president of the Hindu University of America. And uh, so since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Julie, myself, and Abhinav Duvedi are here to do just that. Welcome, Abhinav, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Lily. Uh, Namaste to all of you. Namaste. I look forward to having a very, very interesting discussion this morning. Yes. Me so, too. Yes. So let's let's go right into because for those of you who want to learn a little bit about Abhinav, he's been on the show before, and this is a, this is the first person we call back because it was so intriguing, so fascinating to us as we journeyed into um, Hinduism. Abhinav, you're so proud of your culture and your heritage. Um, was there a time that you felt that this wasn't as important to you? Oh, it has always been very important since the, my childhood. And in fact, it became more important as I came to this country many years ago, then I could relate to you know, what my culture, my tradition had to offer in relation to what I was seeing here, because I was not exposed to different kinds of culture that richly when I was back in India as a young person. Mm -hmm. So yes, and, and that's the reason, one of the reasons we started Hindu University because it needs to be brought out to everybody. Because ultimately, all seeking, real seeking, spiritual seeking, is between you and your God, whatever mm -hmm. your God is. And everything else you use along the way, whether it's a books, whether it's a guru, whether it's a priest, whether it's a church, whether it's a temple, it's all to help you in that connection between you and your God. So it doesn't matter what helps you or what doesn't help you. What helps you, you keep it, it doesn't help you, put it aside, let others use it. So that's a broad way of Hinduism progressing since thousands of years. Okay, so I want to set it really clear because I know that there's a lot of myths about Hinduism. Yes, and one in particular is the 330 million gods that are out there in Hinduism. They, we, you are told, we are told that Hinduism is a polytheistic religion but in fact, it's very different than what we thought. First of all, I don't know where this 330 million comes. I think <laughs> probably the, when the European civilization came in contact with India and mm -hmm. they found these so many different ways of approaching God, somebody just humorously said, oh, there are so many gods, you know, because maybe the population of India at that time was 33 33 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they said, oh, there are that many gods because there are that many people, different ways of worshipping it. So that is, yes. Now, polytheism, monotheism, is a, these are the words which are used typically in Western philosophy. In India, we don't have those words. We only know there is one God, but that one God, one reality, one supreme being, whatever name you want to call it, manifests in many, many different ways. You can approach him the way you want it. It could be a, a, a very fatherly figure to you, a motherly figure to you, a lover to you, a child to you, an enemy to you, whatever you want it to be. As long as you connect with that supreme reality, that's all it counts. So different ways of worship is basically you say, oh, I like this particular aspect of the God. Let me approach him because this is, it pleases me it makes it easier for me to approach him. Naturally, you approach something what you like. You take the road which is favorable to you, which you are familiar with it, which makes you happy. That's all it is. You know, uh, Abhinav, I've said this on the show that um, pretty much whatever road you take will take you to where you, it is that you want to go. Like if you, if you, if you, I'll give you a really um, easy example. If you enter lillianmcdermott.com, or when you need a friend.com, it'll take you to my website. So if you have, and, and, and I love the picture, the, the image that you give 
that every one of us has a different favorite picture of our mother. Yes, yes. But it's still our mother. The mother. It doesn't matter which picture you, you worship or you like it or you keep it in your wallet. Yes, yeah, that's but it. that's not your mother. Yeah. Your mother is your mother. But it reminds you of your mother. Whichever picture you look at it, ultimately, if it doesn't remind you of mother, then picture is just a piece of paper. But which connects you immediately, the love and the affection, all those good things you remember about your mom. Yes. And that's most important. So any picture, any idol, anything you use, any even object of worship, anything you use, even if it's a cross, if it reminds you of God, that's a holy thing for you. Mm, beautiful. If it's a crescent moon. If it reminds you of a God, it's a holy thing for you. Otherwise, it's just a piece of object or a piece of heart. That's all it is. Mm, beautiful. That's the most important part. Yeah, go ahead, Julie. Do you so want Abhi, to ask? Abhinav, you have, you know, identify a supreme being. A couple of questions. What is the name or what do you call that supreme being? And then in the temple, I don't remember seeing any ode to the supreme creator. So tell me about the presence of this supreme in, being. In depending on which branch of Hinduism or which aspect of Hinduism take, there are literally thousands of names. There are literally thousands of names. In fact, to emphasize that the God, any name you worship with God is approachable. There are certain recitations people do every day, which has thousand names. Just to remind you that any name is only a particular aspect, particular description, particular way of approaching him. That's all it is. So there is no particular name which is refers to the Supreme. Any name you take, thousands and thousands of those, as long as it refers to that Supreme, that is mm. the one for you. Some may call it Vishnu, some may call it Krishna, some may call it Shiva, some may call it Ganesh, Hanuman, Lakshmi, Durga, feminine, male, doesn't matter. It's ultimately how you want to approach it. It doesn't matter what you call bread. Ultimately, you have to eat it, whatever name you want to call it. The Chinese people have a different name for bread. English has a different word for bread. Hindi has a different word for bread. I'm sure Hebrew has a different word for bread. It is ultimately the same bread. You have to eat it. But do you think, Abhinav, in that line, and this is something that I have believed in for such a long time, does bread really care what we call bread? Yes. <laughs> does bread really care? As long as we recognize bread as bread, it doesn't matter, right? Right, exactly. So, so with, go ahead. So that is the, the approach Hinduism has taken for thousands of years, not something new. That's how various in fact, what we call Hinduism is just an, a sort of a, a name given by Europeans when they came in contact with India. But Hindus don't themselves don't have a name like that. It used to be called Sanatan Dharma, eternal ways. Basically, that's all it means. That any path you take, as long as you take it, you follow it sincerely, it will take you there. Sometimes it will take longer time, sometimes it will be shorter time. Sometimes it'll be harder, easier, doesn't matter. But because that's the path you have chosen. And that's it. And if you don't like it, you can change it anytime. But you see, that's what's so beautiful about this <laughs> denomination. Is that, you know, okay, as a Christian, it's scripture says that the only way to God is through the Son. And to me, that seems so limiting of God. That may be our limitations. And that may be our belief and maybe interpretation in the Bible. But I truly believe that the one who created us has, you know, we say no beginning, no ending. Yeah, no I ending. believe it has no sex, no, no uh, gender and uh, is and always will be. And so I can't imagine this kind of God sitting there going, oh, you didn't call me by my name. I'm yeah. going to send curses upon you. I don't believe that. That's not my God. So, so, if, if God is of infinite compassion, mm -hmm. he cannot be bothered by small human limitations, deficiencies, and so on. He is all compassionate, like a mother. You know, a little child is going to do pranks, may not understand everything. So he says, oh, it's okay. It's part of the growth. 
you grow as you do mistakes as you grow up you learn more and more things and that is such a loving and encouraging image of god just imagining this all compassion embrace that the silly things i do the mistakes that, i make and that does not mean the mother will not once in a while punish a child just to teach a lesson do you think god punishes <laughs> us though of enough do you think i don't mean to interrupt you but i i am going to do you think god punishes or punishes our free will does our free will and our detachment of god is what causes punishment we call it punishment because we don't like something but it is a teaching lesson mother will make it something harder for child to discipline him to show him something new a different way of doing it child may think it is a punishment but it is a lesson in life to, so that the child will grow so we call we from a limited point of view say oh it's a punishment god has given me this tough life or tough situation no it's a it's a growth it's an opportunity for growth you have to learn something so that you can become closer to the mother but even that it's love out of love mother does that I get it. I get it. So when, when we say, when I said at the beginning, and I saw you nodding your head, the most unorganized, organized religion, because there's no way you allow people to worship when they want, come and go as they want. So share a little bit about the philosophy of that. It is, it is unorganized from outside, but is extremely organized from within. Yes. Because you are supposed to discipline yourself. If you are sincere in your search, you got to follow certain way of approaching whatever it is the truth whatever you call truth is whether you want to call truth as truth you want to approach through non violence you want to approach through compassion you want to approach through education charity service to the poor people or whatever this is your way of approaching him because that's all you have the god is is not something which you can touch and feel immediately so you have to approach him through all the things you have given you have been given rationality rational mind you approach to that you have been given a heart you approach to that you have been given body hands so you approach to service and or some combination of this so abhinav i think many religions don't yeah. trust their believers as much as hinduism does because i think that amount of freedom would scare frankly <clears throat> most you know religious authorities they're like people can't be trusted to discipline themselves we have to give them all these rules we have that, to lay that, out for them what it means to be religious in hinduism ultimately does not believe in any belief he say you must experience what you are otherwise it could be figment of imagination figment of your ideas or whatever so yeah you may start with certain belief but until you realize it that's why the realization experience is most important in in uh, hindu tradition okay. therefore there's so much okay happening. okay we're going to hold this thought we're going to hold this thought cuz this is powerful and we're going to continue our conversation worldwide at when you need a friend.com we'll be right here waiting for you <laughs> so i mean we weren't able to to um uh tell you about the opening your chat button so you didn't know that the time was like wrapping up so let me give you it'll give us some time to to kind of um so i i would love to talk about um julie you have some questions about karma and worship idling um the animals or right okay so i think a, a question that everybody has is why do you worship cows which of course we'll talk about we'll that clear, give but... the answer in the air yeah yep. And then, um, so karma, that, and then I think maybe with the, if we have a chance, I think the, the vegetarianism and that, you know, philosophy of eating would be really interesting. Well, I, I also want to go into uh, reincarnation, but, and today, Abhinav, I know that the talking points are so beautiful and profound, but today we just want to dip our toe. Okay. All right. We'll have you come back and talk okay. deeper. Sure. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Time to dance. Well, Abhinav, we haven't seen you dance yet. All right. You can take a look. <laughs> He's done. I'm done dancing. At 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. 
Welcome back to the Lil McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And today's teacher is Abhinav Dwavedi. My co-host, Julie Meichler, is with us. She's been um, away for a while, and uh, she is back. And we are going back, a Thelma Louise, as we call ourselves, <laughs> going on journeys on different uh, religions and denominations, because we believe that the only way that you can really love your neighbor is to truly understand the mind, body, spirit. And so this is a way for us to explore the spiritual side of faith and how others also um, worship. And it's been so enlightening for both of us, right, Julie? It's been a well, great experience. It has. And we were, or we've talked many times that we benefit personally every time we engage in these conversations with beautiful people from other religions but I, I, I'd like to think we're creating a society of acceptance and mutuality and love as we're, you know, bringing other people into this conversation. Yes. Thank you for that. And so I want to remind you, as you know, I've always tell you to go and like my, my, uh, when you need a friend.com, you can go to Lillian McDermott.com. Just not everybody knows how to spell my name. So when you need a friend.com, we'll take you there. And so we started a contest on Facebook. So for those of you who want three free coaching sessions from me. You can go to uh, my Facebook page. If you go to whenyouneedafriend.com, you can click on my Facebook, my YouTube, all my social media. And if you click on, go to click on my Facebook, it'll take you to that post where if you, um, I think you need to share um, the page you also need to um, invite your friends to like my page. It's uh, at Lillian's Radio Show and uh, on Facebook. And you also, I think what else there is, uh, then you need to um, like it, like my page, share my page, and invite people to, to like my page. And that'll enter you into a contest. Three free coaching sessions from me. And that's a 300 and. $50 value, I believe. Anyway, so then the next, next thing is tomorrow, Saturday, we are going to be live at the Veg Fest. So we're going to do at, on WBOB at 11 o'clock. I'm usually on uh, WBOB, which is a Jacksonville station on Saturday from 11 to 12. And we're going to do the show live from uh, Veg Fest. So I want to encourage you if you want to go there and be part of the live broadcast, we'll be in booth number one. Right when you come in, we'll be right there waiting for you. And then last but not least, they've invited me to speak for, for at the hour of five and six. So between five and six, I'll be talking about the teachers, what the teachers on the show have taught me, which are the eight keys to living the life of our dreams. So I hope you can join me uh, tomorrow, um, March 3rd. I can't believe it's March already. And of course, I try not to date ourselves because that means that, that when I play this again, we're going to go, oh, wait, this is a repeat. Okay, so no. So today, I want to encourage you to expand yourself. Allow yourself to go beyond. And this is my question to you. And Abhinav, thank you so much. You're such, I just want to squeeze your cheeks. Would that be disrespectful if I did that in Hinduism? <laughs> can do that. No problem. Anytime. Because uh, when Julie and I went to the Muslim um, um, uh, synagogue, because um, I'm thinking Gurudwara, because we've been to Gurudwara. Okay. So, um, when we went to this, we could not touch anybody. And I ran into somebody I knew from the business world and I gave him a hug and it was like, oh, you're not supposed to touch. Okay, okay, well, I understand. But with Hinduism, can we hug you? We can hug anybody. <laughs> you see, that's what I love about Hinduism. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. It's easy. It's easy. Okay, so Julie, you had some questions for um, Abhinav and uh, go ahead. I have a million questions, but I want to go back just a second to the idea of greeting one another, that there's a, a special greeting from Hindus. So tell us about that and what it means. And it's a word wow. we're pretty familiar with, but we want to get it from the source no, as to what wow, it means. No. That, that, that actually summarizes the entire religion in one word called Namaste. Namaste. Namaste actually is a sentence. It means I bow to the divinity within you. Now, if you look at the implications of that simple gesture of bringing the heart, the hands, and the head together, 
in, in bowing position to the person. It means my entire being is looking to the divine within you. I'm not looking who you are outwardly, your face, your color, your religion, your age, your gender, but I look to the divinity within you and from the deep within my heart, which, is, which also has divinity, we meet each other at that space. So that is what it is. So it is a, a very, very highest form of greeting you can have because mm -hmm. immediately it recognizes that you are a divine person. No longer you know, shrouded or covered by this particular appearance I have in front of me. And it raises your consciousness to a little higher level. So immediately deal with that person in that, that state of consciousness. Rather than looking at, you know, oh, he's a white or a black or a brown or whatever. You know, all those things take a back seat. So that so is what, the means. So what kind of a society do you think we would have if we all approached each other in that spirit of namaste? It, it, because that ultimately takes to what we are talking about, freedom, equality, liberty, brotherhood, all the things which are enshrined in our democratic ideas. This idea of brotherhood has taken a back seat if you look at it. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood of what? Brotherhood of people under the fatherhood of God. That is what brotherhood is supposed to be. Not Absolutely. brotherhood of the same color or of same religion. No, that's a very limited way of looking at it. Brotherhood of humanity under the fatherhood of God. Very nice. That immediately takes you to that namaste idea. Mm. If you practice it, you really mean it. And that's what it is. Simple. Namaste. It is, it is simple and beautiful. Lillian, what do you think? You know, um, I've said this so many times and I've written about it because uh, in the way I grew up, I was taught, and, and this is maybe what I made up about it, but I was taught that, you know, God was everywhere. And, uh, but I never thought of God within me until I started working on myself and working on my personal growth. As a matter of fact, the radio show, I would say that all the teachers that I've had on, it made me understand that, and I've, I've always knew this, but I didn't know how to verbalize it, that the creator who created me lives within me. And so if I... It's a very ancient uh, thing. Jesus has saying right? That's right. It's a, people saying, I and my father in heaven are one, or man is made in the image of God. These are very mysterious statements. If you have to deeply contemplate those things to really understand what those things mean. It doesn't mean God has two hands and two eyes and two ears. No. It is in a spiritual mm -hmm. sense he's talking about. Well, we and have, what? Abhinav, we have turned God into our image. But yes. that, yes. That, is, that is not to me. And that's when I was growing up, I couldn't handle statues. I did not like statues because it, it blocked me from my image of, of what I entered, how I entered into my spirituality. But it wasn't until I walked into a Hindu temple that I realized, wow, look at all the plethora of, of, of different things that I can draw to 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 get to where I want to get to. And that's why sometimes I think people close their eyes because when people close their eyes, that image of who they are, of what they want, the, what they, the, that connection, when we close our eyes, it blocks us from the exterior world and it allows us to make that deep connection with our creator. So that, I, 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 I've, I've known this for my whole life. I just didn't know how to verbalize it that, because God is in me, I can do all things. Yes, you have a tremendous potential. I do have potential. You can bring out your divinity. You can bring out some divine qualities within you. Yes. And that is what all evolution is about. Yes. Growing from animality to humanhood to the divinity is a journey. It may take thousands of years, who knows? But that is a journey. Yes bringing out higher and higher level of consciousness. Uh, uh, Julie, you, you have something you want to add. Yeah, I want to add, uh, follow up with that. that the, and, and you touched on this in our tour, and I'd like you to, to share it with our listening friends, the role of meditation 
in this spirituality and under because it is the idea of namaste and and of all of hinduism is really quite mystic, mystical so, so the the outward forms whether it's a, you know various kind of uh, gods and goddesses or things like rosary in your hand or any spiritual object you need is only the beginning of the journey at some point you realize that there is something within you which is seeking it's not your mind it's not your feeling but something in deeper things within you is looking to find out who you are who all these things about what is this universe and that's where the contemplation starts that's where the philosophical work mm. start and then you go deep into it it is meditation meditation is trying to connect the divinity within you before you connect divinity outside in the outside world or in the heavens okay not us if that's what it is because god is everywhere it is in me also and therefore i need to connect with him find out who he is what it is and then it becomes lot easier to connect him outside in objects and other and people. we're going to continue our conversation with avinav duvedi and julie michler when we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com we'll be right here waiting for you avinav i don't want to interrupt you <laughs> <laughs> So I don't I'm not used to watching everything yet but I think that I do. <laughs> but if you see me doing I mean, this <laughs> that's a clue. <laughs> when Lillian starts her calisthenics, you know we're uh, going to music. Yeah. Especially when I'm like I'm I'm going like this now. <laughs> Let's be peaceful about this. Okay. <clears throat> so, Abhinav, I do want to talk about reincarnation. So, let's make this last segment about that and uh, Julie, um, I, I, if you want to add, just make sure that you, you send me your signal and that way I'll acknowledge you back in and, and we'll continue doing that. But um, I do want to talk about uh, reincarnation because I think that that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions or maybe we need to be straightened up by it. So I don't want to talk about it now because I don't want to repeat ourselves for our viewers. Is there anything that you feel is the biggest misconception of hinduism that you'd like to clear up right now it's uh, this uh, this um, multiple gods is one big uh, misconception mm -hmm. and reincarnation okay so they were going to and does uh, karma uh, connect with reincarnation uh, do we want to bring in what about those? karma and dharma we talked about dharma They're all dharma is your inner law the inner law is your divine law it is not the law of the mind law of the body law of the heart but something even higher which connects you to everything else to the god that is why it is called eternal religion or eternal laws so that's the name of the hinduism in, in our traditional language sanatan dharma dharma means your own innate law your own innate qualities real qualities not superficial qualities what we call personality is acquired from outside this is how i want to look to the others this is what i have educated myself this is what uh, how much property i have or this is the achievement i have. these are all external things it is not real you real you is something different and those have essentially divine qualities and if you follow that path then you are following dharma your the joy compassion all those things are your natural qualities mm -hmm. violence hatred these are imposed because of certain our our conditioning from outside so is I dharma so is dharma the fruit of the spirit like what we call dharma could... dharma is, is basically set of your inner qualities inner qualities not outside not oh, your inner required. qualities compassion inner qualities. love com okay. yes. but isn't that and the fruit of the spirit that is the nature yes that that's what nature is the na natural qualities are okay anything else contrary to that you have acquired from outside because the society has taught you that one family tradition the religion or this or that experience has taught you to either hate or to limit yourself in certain understanding but if you open yourself up and that's the purpose of the meditation go back to find out what your real qualities are Okay, this is our last segment. Let's make it count. And keep an eye on that number. <laughs> if you see me going like this, you know, here we go, it's time to dance. <laughs>
You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And today, my co-host is Julie Michler, and our teacher is mm-hmm. Abhinav Dwaveri. Love, love, love him. And I know, Julie, you feel the same way. I do, I do. Yes. And so I want to, I ask Abhinav, what are the two misconceptions? One of them is the polytheism, that they really are a monotheistic faith. And um, the next one is reincarnation, which I talked about at the beginning. Now, this is my question to you. Who came up with reincarnation? No one's ever come back really, to talk about, other than the stories of Jesus, that, you know, how did Hinduism embrace reincarnation? See, there are two ways you can look at it. One is the the highest faculty we have is a rational thought, highest level, from where all the philosophies come. Now, if you look at the world as it is, and you ask questions, who you are, what the world is, and so on, and if you go deep enough, you will find that this life cannot be the only life. There has to be something continuing because something comes to us as a result we are born. Something goes out of us, we are dead. Our mind dies, our body dies, our emotions dies, our thought dies, everything dies. But something leaves our body. That's the, what we call death. So if you just follow rational to the ultimate, you'll see that there is no other choice but to accept rationality. That's one way to look at it. The other is going deep within you, which the yogis do it, the saints do it, the great sages do it, and they actually experience it. Yes, you are not the only one in this particular you know, life you have. You have other lives. For example, if you go to the Buddhist literature, there's a tremendous amount of stories about Buddha's previous lives. Buddha himself is telling his disciples, he was so and so in this life and so and so in that life and that experience and so on. And it shows how the soul has evolved over generations, over lives and lives and lives, so that one day he became what we call Buddha, enlightened one. Buddha means enlightened one. That's all it means. Buddha, the word Buddha means enlightened one. So it is a journey. It may take hundreds of lives. We don't know how many it may It's up to you how rapidly you progress in your own development because all tools are given to you. The divinity is within you. The mind is within you. Body is within you. Now you have to use those things to go further. So reincarnation has been a very ancient idea, at least in all traditions which have originated in India. As far as I have learned, it was even accepted in the early Christianity as well. But for some reason, then later on, it was probably discarded or whatever it happened to it. But many religions, many even other traditions have reincarnation in different forms. Okay, so we believe in eternal life. What you're saying to me is that the eternal life that we have is really on this earth? And we come back, how do we choose? Because when I went through my personal growth and and became a life coach as as a result of this, that when we die, we're given a choice to come back and we choose what experience we need. That's a philosophy. Now, I don't know where it was rooted, who came up with it, but it's really poetic and it's beautiful. But is it real? Yes, because if you have only one life, if you have only one life, physical life, and no other life later on, then a whole set of other philosophical questions arise that what you do in your life, how come the soul has to suffer in heaven or hell? It is one life. The soul did not have a choice of what kind of body he will have, what kind of environment he will have, what kind of parents he will have, or physical conditions, and still it has to suffer. So the idea of reincarnation allows you to, okay, even, even if you are limited in one life, you have other lives available to progress further and further. And therefore, At some point you grow because human life is very short, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 years. You cannot make all the progress from your ordinary level to the God level in just one life. You need to grow, assimilate as you grow, get experiences. And therefore this idea of the soul or the divine portion within you keeps on growing. 
until it realizes its full potential. It okay. becomes divine itself. That's the idea behind it. Okay. And so, Julie, you wanted to ask a question? So, right. So, Abhinav, tell us about that, a little more about that full potential that Hinduism, as I remember from our conversation, doesn't mean you just cycle and cycle and cycle through, but there's a, a goal here. So, tell us yeah. about that. Yes. The idea is you are progressively going higher and higher levels. It is not going round and round in a circle, but it is the evolution of consciousness within you. That divine thing which is sitting within you, what we call soul normally on ordinary language, it is coming out more and more. It realizes more and more of its potential. It is like covered with so many layers of ignorance. That's what the yogic language uses it. That you are covered with so many layers of ignorance. The physical ignorance, the ignorance because of the, your emotions and likes and dislikes and attachments and so on. Your preconceived ideas, mental imagination, all these are levels of ignorance. Each one needs to be worked upon, shared upon, removed slowly. And that's, far, that's what the, each life is given to you. So you can progress from one life to another life and your own real potential at some point gets come out. And that is your full realization that you are a divine being, not limited by this body-mind complex. You have this potential. And that is what these great saints, if you look at the lives of Christ or a Buddha or a Krishna or some other people, you'll see they have realized that they are essentially divine. When Jesus says, I and my father are heaven in one, what does that mean? Does it mean two hands and so on? No. In a sense, I am one with him. I have the same qualities as my father in heaven. Father in heaven means the transcendent God, which has not taken birth. But his portion has come down into various beings we call soul or Atman in Hinduism. And that's what it is. It grows from life, life to life. Okay. So Lillian, you had that question about reincarnation. Was it answered? <laughs> no, I still have more. So, so who chooses? Who gets... Or do you get to a point where you stop being reincarnated? When you reach the highest level, like Buddha or Christ, what happens, you don't, don't need to come back again because you have already realized yourself. But out of compassion to other beings, you decide to come back periodically. Say, so, okay, let me come back, come, come back as a, in this region or that region or that time frame or this age or that age and bring other people, help them other people so that they also rise like I have done it. So out of compassion, you know, if you know the story of Buddha, that he, he let go the nirvana and came back. That means I don't want to merge myself back into the God. Let me go back and help other people realize their potential. So that is the whole evolution is about. In and are Hinduism, those, it's periodically... Go ahead. Go ahead, Julie. Yes. Are, are those the people that you call gurus? Explain the... Are, are, are gurus enlightened ones or are they just teachers? Keep in mind, we only have very oh, little left. <laughs> I think this is a deep one. They are, they are teachers. They are on the journey themselves. Maybe they are a step or two ahead of everybody. That may be true. So, but sometimes they have their own ambition also. It's all gurus are not necessarily spiritually realized person or have only spiritual a goal in mind. They have worldly goals also. And well, Guru will become some kind of We goal. could probably have, I think we need to continue this conversation, Julie. We just keep There's so much more. Don't make There's it. There's so much more. I know, I know, I know. I am so grateful to you, Abhinav Dvavedi. For those of you who would like to learn more about Hinduism, uh, Abhinav is the president, vice president of um, um, the Hindu University of America, and it's that H U. A dot edu. Abhinav, thank you so much for being. Most thank you, Abhinav. Enjoyed. Yes, thank and Julie, you thank you for being my Thelma oh. and Louise. Anytime, <laughs> Lou. And so I want to quickly, before we say goodbye, I want to remind you that um, tomorrow we'll be at VegFest. Join us from 11 to 12 for our broadcast live. We're going to be interviewing some great people that are there. And also from 5 to 6, I'll be giving a talk, The Eight Keys to Living the Life of Our Dreams. Thank you, you two beautiful people. Namaste.
And, stay. and to you, my listening friend, I hope that this has allowed you to dip your toe. And please remember in religion, the religion, and remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at when you need a friend.com. This is Lily McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. ever. Good job. Whoa, so much to go through. So little time. So I'm, little time. We talk about the you, tip Julie, of the iceberg. Didn't I tell you, Julie, that this is like for sure, probably the most, um, because th there is a God and <clears throat> I had gone to a Buddhist uh, temple uh, a while ago and, but they told me, and maybe that sect because I've had other Buddhists say that's not true, but this Buddhist sect said that when you die, you die. That's it. You go to the earth. That's it. No There's Buddhists no believe that. That's what <laughs> I was told at this particular Buddhist temple. Is that true? Uh -huh. I don't know about it because there are so many sects in Buddhism. I don't know all the branches of Buddhism. Yeah, so, this particular maybe, one, and I said, I'm walking. I mean, I, I just couldn't get past that. I, I cannot, and I, in, my, in my every bit of me, I just cannot believe that you die, you die. You go to the earth and you become soil for the earth. I just... What is the ultimate purpose of otherwise existence on life? Uh, if you just die and, you know, what is the purpose of this? But there has to be some deeper purpose of coming. It's not just to, you know go get up and go to a job and then earn money. And that can be the ultimate purpose. It has to be something much deeper than that. Well, thank you for teaching us about um, Hinduism. Really, uh, oh, I want to mention, since I've already given out this is March uh, 2nd, um, on April 25th, 26th, 27th, or 26th, 27th, 28th? What are the dates? I, I don't have it here right now. Sorry. There's an event at the Castleberry uh, Temple. What is that, um, Abhinav? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to recall what that is. Oh, yes, that's an opening of the, uh, you know, after uh, restoration of deities, there's a big opening there. Yes, yes. And uh, so I, we, we, maybe I can post... It's a technical word called Kumbhabishekam. There's a big word. But in that month's uh, restoring back, you know, because they had stopped the temple or closed the temple for a while for... So I'm doing repair work and restoration and adding a few more things. Yeah. So it's a reopening of the temp temple at that time. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, well, we, we've got to, we, uh, I wish we could talk for another I did too, trip. but I got to run real quick yes, here. Yes, me too. Abhinav, thank you so much. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. See you again soon. Namaste. Bye. Bye.